We're going to have a look today at TYT's newest dual band analog radio and I've only had it for about an hour so this is not going to be based on any field experience with the unit. I haven't even programmed it for anything locally yet. Just to introduce some of these features and it's an analog radio you'll see it only has the one button on the top and when it powers on you get a monochrome LCD display and the backlighting is adjustable in the programming software which we'll see to always on to auto I've got it always on right now the radio comes with two battery packs I asked them to send me what they call the higher capacity one and I will have to do a load test on it to see what the capacity actually is. You can probably get some idea of what to expect from it by looking at the weight and comparing that to other known packs and this one doesn't feel to me to be extended and at 74 grams I have a suspicion that perhaps they just sent the regular duty battery pack with it. You can see it has the metal housing and if it's like their other radios there's a silicone gasket around on the inside which I believe they guarantee to take it to IP54 if not um, IP67 we'll have to check on that. The battery has the connector mounts for the belt clip. It is programmed with the standard Kenwood pin style um, two pin programming cable that uses uh, the same chipset, the prolific style chipset that you use to program all the other Chinese radios such as Baofeng and Wushan and uh, the other TYT analog radios. Again, this is an analog radio. It has what appears to be 127 channels in it and there are two programmable channels above and below the push to talk switch on the side. It has the antenna connector which then uses an SMA male antenna as you can see there. I do see it appears to have the flashlight uh, which I haven't seen on the other TYT radios I assume they've put on there to compete with what in the past Baofeng and Anytone were doing with some of their radios. The keypad very similar to the other TYTs and the AB switch moves you between the uh, two zones so you've got A and B zones on the top. Um, <clears throat> standard icons on the top giving you a very inefficient looking battery capacity icon and that's about it. We'll just run through what the programming software interface looks like quickly. It's typical of your offshore software in that under the file menu you don't have an option to print or to import a CSV file or export. Kind of what you have come to expect from this offshore software in other words your expectations will not be exceeded so the first thing to do with all new radios is you go and read from the radio and uh, you don't even get a confirmation window it just goes ahead and does the read now you're ready to program it and uh, right here I'm in the 
channel window or the, the frequency list and it takes you to 127 which I assume is the total number of channels. It also appears that you just enter either your UHF or your VHF frequency accordingly and you have frequency stepping available uh, as low as 2.5k again which we've come to expect. It'd be really nice to find a radio with 1k in order to do telemetry for uh, collared animals but this is not unusual. You have wide or narrow band or mid and here's where you're going to put your channel name which we will put here for now as testing and we'll call that UHF and then down here we will go testing VHF and let's put in uh, a different frequency see what happens I see if you want a simplex frequency it doesn't automatically propagate over to the TX so you'd have to send that in yourself you can encode your CTCSS I see it looks like it's got a built-in scrambler pick your power level mid low or high your stepping wider narrow band then you can uh, save it and um, I'm not going to bother right now then write it again it's going to write directly to the radio and you will see here is under basic that's where you put in your name and I recommend putting in your email address in order to uh, have it return to you or your phone number if you lose it and someone picks it up they'll probably get back to you so these are the settings that you're gonna put into the basic under display no mode that you'll see when I show a picture of the radio again that this means that you can either display the frequency the channel or the name of the channel we're gonna pick name on here some of your other parameters you could choose and there that's pretty much it the COM port you've selected is over here in the bottom left and uh, this uses the standard prolific style cable because it's not a digital radio this is the stock antenna that comes with the radio let's have a look at the forward power that this antenna will produce at 150 VHF 5.4 got a 5.4 on forward power with that now let's see what would happen if you were to use that same stock antenna at 165 you get forward power of 4 so you've lost 1.5 watts next I'm going to try a tuned antenna and I might as well use a frequency close to what that tuned antenna is for a repeater that is about 35 kilometers away line of sight standing wave of 4.6 now the antenna is laying on the horizontal I'm just wondering what would happen if we move this to the vertical.
and as you can hear the repeater got tripped. And in conclusion here's a look at some of the other radios that you might be familiar with just to have an idea of how their form factor and size compares to one another. Here's the TYT UHF TC568. We call it the tail gunner radio because it's often used by guides who give it to their tail gunners when they're running a ski delineation area down the hill. And of course that's the smallest of the TYTs. Then here is the UV88, an MD390. Uh, the reflector tape is on there because these uh, radios are ones that I use and in the field and so this is for uh, delineating this is the radio that she who must be obeyed carries because it's digital it has the plug that's required for her should I need to try and query it if she goes into a tree well and uh, this is the HYT which I'm currently using in my day job and last this is the charger that the UV88 uses. So in conclusion I think this is going to be a, a popular model for TYT because the price point I assume it's going to be around the $50 mark or less. The case seems to be very rugged and the features are all in there that uh, most people are going to want. So if there's anything I can add to this in terms of uh, more comprehensive field testing, you can expect to see a further review on this down the road, especially if there are more questions and more people are interested in it. So drop me a line down below if you are.